Is the new Fall Out Boy album so much for Stardust worth a listen? Let's find out. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Nick here with you. Welcome back to the Rock Squad channel and welcome to my rock album review of the brand new album from Fall Out Boy. It's called So Much for Stardust. Before we get to it guys, if you love to rock out as much as we do here on the Rock Squad channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to like this video. We'd appreciate that. Make sure to share this video online with your friends and fellow rock fans. So Much for Stardust is the eighth studio album from Fall Out Boy. It's the follow-up to 2018's Mania. And I would say I'm a Fall Out Boy fan. I'm by no means a huge fan of the band, but I've enjoyed a lot of the music they put out uh, over the years, especially the stuff from earlier on in their career. Uh, songs like, you know, Sugar, We're Going Down, and Thanks for the Memories and stuff like that. And they've released some good music uh, over the years. I think they're a really talented band. Patrick Stump has a great voice, maybe one of the best voices in rock. And Pete Wentz, obviously, is a great lyricist as well. So I would say I'm a Fall Out Boy fan, even though I'm not a diehard fan of the band. I would say over the last decade or so, I've kind of fallen off with a lot of their, their new releases, and I don't know a lot of their, their current releases from the last decade or so, because I found like they kind of moved away from that uh, pop punk and pop rock vibe that they had on their early albums and moved into doing more experimental things, which is fine. You know, they wanted to follow their artistic uh, and creative endeavors and kind of journey through that and, and, and do things that what really interested them and make music that interested them. But they got more in kind of poppy territory and got really almost kind of um, op operatic is the word I keep thinking about. Like, so many huge songs and so much uh, kind of like overtures with the band. And there is some of that on this uh, on this album as well. Uh, but I, it, they kind of moved away from the pop rock sound that I really like that they had earlier in their career. Career. And I'm happy to say, actually, after listening to this new album so much for Stardust, that this album is a great mix of old school Fall Out Boy and new school Fall Out Boy. Yes, I think so much for Stardust actually swings really well between the old school kind of pop rock, pop punk, uh, emo vibes of early Fall Out Boy with the, the more poppy and, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more uh, mainstream and operatic side. Of, I, that's the word that keeps coming back to me, operatic side of their sound that they've done over uh, the last decade. So let me run through... Some some of the tracks, actually most of the tracks that I, I listened to and enjoyed on So Much For Stardust, I think this was a really solid record. It kicks off with Love From The Other Side, which is the big uh, first single from this record. It has an epic uh, string intro on it. So uh, Fall Out Boy, are, they're not just a, a pop rock band anymore. They're trying to do more epic sounding things, which is something that I can really appreciate and something that I love uh, when it comes to listening to, uh, to my favorite rock music. Uh, so it has an epic string intro and then the band uh, continues. This is a little bit more of that new school Fall Out Boy sound. Uh, there are tracks on this album that I like more than this song, but I do think it kicks things off in a really cool way. Uh, and then it goes into Heartbreak Feels So Good. I really, really enjoyed this song. This has a great melody, great vocals. It's the second single from the record. Uh, it was an early favorite for me when I was listening to this album. It's something that really hooked me. As somebody who hasn't listened to a lot of Fall Out Boy over the last decade, maybe not a lot of Fall Out Boy albums in general. I haven't listened to a lot of their stuff in full. I thought this was a, a really good way to kick off the album after Love From The Other Side. It had some really cool synths on it as well. Uh, one of my favorites was Hold Me Like a Grudge. I thought this was a great song. Uh, it had a little bit of a Queen, Another One Bites the Dust kind of sound to it. It had a, a really fast vocal Michael Jackson kind of style going on. I know that Fall Out Boy has never been shy about uh, you know, wearing their influences on their sleeve. Even if it was more poppy or R&B kind of influences, there's a lot of that going on in this album, which I really enjoyed. So this is a, kind of a Queen, Another One Bites the Dust meets Michael Jackson uh, kind of thing. I love the chorus. And then the guitar is almost reminding me of something like Brand Ferdinand would do so it has almost like a, a mid 2000s uh, indie rock vibe to it so I really enjoyed Hold Me Like a Grudge. One of my favorite tracks on this record was Fake Out. Uh, the boys in Fall Out Boy take it down a notch on this song. So the ebbs and flows of this album are really, really good. They take things down when they need to. They bring things back up when they need to. And I think this one is a really strong contender for a fourth single uh, from this record. I wouldn't be surprised if they do a, a single release and a video for this one. Love the guitar line in this. So this is definite fave. I love Fake Out. Uh, Heaven, Iowa. Uh, this is uh, another one that takes things down a little bit, a little more ebbs and flows. This one's a little more of a valley than a peak. Uh, so Patrick Stumpy sings his, his heart out on this song. It's absolutely cool, incredible. His voice is a little bit softer, a little bit more operatic, a little bit more of that new school uh, Fall Out Boy sound. Uh, but it kicks in a little bit halfway through the song, I think, and then it really, really soars from there. So I, I enjoyed Heaven, Iowa. Uh, so good right now. It was getting some major soul and Motown vibes from this song. It's 
really, really poppy. It's poppy as fuck. Probably the poppiest song uh, on the record, and that's okay because I love a good pop melody, no matter what band is playing it. So it has that very, very sunny kind of sound to it. It's a summer anthem. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people are going to be listening to So Good right now. It has a very positive vibe. They're going to be listening to it uh, this summer. And then we get into a very strange track. This one's more of a transition track called uh, Pink Seashell, which features a sound clip of actor Ethan Hawke talking about his father. I'm not quite sure what is going on here at least on my, my first listen but it's uh, backed by some really great strings there's a, the strings and horns and, and arrangements on this album the orchestral side of things arrangements are fantastic uh, and that's a definite to highlight so on this song Pink, Pink Seashell feature, features uh, actor Ethan Hawke doing a little bit of a spoken word thing like I said it's a transition so it didn't really do much for me but uh, then it goes into uh, I Am My Own Muse this is very much a new school kind of follow up boy song had some great strings on it and it shows the band's um, ambition and their progression They've never been shy about uh, continuing to evolve as a band. And that's something that you definitely can't knock them for. Uh, even if I don't love everything they do uh, nowadays like I, like I did in the past, um, you know, it's always good that they follow their their artistic endeavors. Getting a flu game. This one was a little bit of a um, it was a little bit of a filler track for me. Uh, I think it was maybe not not a great track. It had a little bit of a swing beat to it. A little bit of a late album filler track. So I didn't really like flu game. And then we get into baby annihilation, which uh, again kind of similar to the Ethan Hawke track on this album features Pete Wentz doing a spoken word thing kind of cool i guess it helps to set the thematic vibe of the album which is all right but overall as a track it didn't did do much for me then we get to the last three tracks on so much for stardust and i'm happy to say that unlike a lot of albums that i review uh here on the channel there are a lot of great late album tracks on this album whereas a lot of bands front load their records with singles and a lot of the strong tracks in the first half and then dip off in the second half Fall Out boy have avoided that on so much for stardust which is really great to hear uh kintsugi kid i love the chorus on this song like i said it's nice to have such a strong track late on in the album a lot of bands don't do that uh, and then we get into a song called what a time to be alive and i love this song probably one of my favorites uh on so much for stardust has a definite michael jackson uh kind of off the wall vibe to it i love the um the strings and the horns on this song again a nod to the arranger and the people who put together uh, a lot of these uh, a lot of these string and orchestral tracks uh it had a michael jackson feel like i said had an earth wind and fire september kind of feel to it as well it had a great guitar solo on it too so i really enjoyed what a time to be alive and then things uh, end on this album with the title track so much for stardust has an incredible string intro again great orchestral work on this re record and then it has a, a piano and kind of a hip-hop beat uh, and then it's a it's a really epic closer and a really strong track to finish off this album uh, and there is a little bit of a reprise of the melody from love uh, from the other side I think I noticed that on this song which I thought was really cool and a great way to wrap things up uh, and the overall I think that so much for Stardust as an album is really strong thematically um, the transition tracks that they put on the record are a great way to keep things moving along without without bringing things down it's a 13 song album so you don't feel like you're losing out with those transition tracks taking up two songs uh, on the record and I think overall thematically this was really strong lyrically is very strong performances were great and uh, I just think this is a really strong effort from uh, from Fall Out Boy. I really enjoyed So Much for Stardust. If I did have a criticism of So Much for Stardust, as much as I love Patrick Stump and I think he's an incredible vocalist, sometimes his vocals grated on me just a little bit. He's doing a lot of great things vocally, a lot of high notes, a lot of operatic, ah, kind of out there singing. So uh, obviously he's an incredible talent and can do that uh, stuff very, very well. But uh, you know, just grated on my nerves a little bit uh, because he's always going s for so many high notes that maybe sometimes he could bring it down a little bit. He does do that on this record, but maybe he could do it uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit more and take it down just a little bit take it down a notch uh, but you know overall for this record I'm a sucker a sucker for catchy pop rock anybody who knows that about me on this channel knows I, I just love catchy pop rock and they were doing all the things that I enjoyed uh, when it comes to melodies and performances lots of great guitars and drums and everything happening on this record as well uh, like I said it's strong all the way through uh, there are ebbs and flows there are some weaker tracks towards the middle of the record but then they pick things up towards the end and have a lot of great uh, strong tracks to finish things off and then uh, it starts uh, strong and, and ends strong. So that's uh, all you can really ask from an album. And I think that uh, Fall Out Boy did a really, really good job. I love the, the soul and the pop influences. Like I said, I love the horns. I love the strings. I love all of that stuff. And I think that uh, Fall Out Boy did a really good job of balancing their, their overall pop rock and emo sound with more soul and pop influences. And I thought that was very cool. So you know what? I'm going to give the new album from Fall Out Boy, So Much for Stardust, a solid four out of five. 
All right, guys, that is it. Let me know what you think of the brand new album from Fall Out Boy called So Much for Stardust in the comments below. Uh, make sure to subscribe to us here at the Rock Squad channel if you love to rock out as much as we do. Uh, make sure to like this video. We'd appreciate that. And make sure to share this video online with your friends and fellow rock fans and your fellow Fall Out Boy fans. And uh, let us know what you think of this album. You can follow us on social media at Rock Squad Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And uh, make sure to check out my band as well. We're called Fools Union. If you love music in the vein of Foo Fighters and Awake and Weezer and that kind of thing, you might dig us as well. So you can check us out at foolsunion.com. But I'll see you guys again for another video here on the Rock Squad channel. Until then, everybody, rock on.